<laughs> and we are live. <laughs> we are live. Yay! I am here with this gorgeous woman, Ms. Charmaine Moore. She is the face of hope and beauty. You can find her on IG. I'll have a link in the comments so you could just click that and it'll take you directly to IG, Instagram for those that don't use that platform. But I've known this beautiful woman for over a year now, and I just feel blessed in my heart to have her in my life and I wanna share her with everybody else. She was at my retreat last year. She shared a meditation and her story and she's going to do the same this year. And please, I'd like you to give her a round of applause. Ms. Charmaine Moore, I'm gonna let her take her story away. <laughs> Hello everybody. Thank you so much, Melinda, for having me on your Hope When There Was None podcast and just giving me the opportunity to speak live and shine my light and just shower everyone with love. Um, yes. If you ask me, what is my superpower? I will let you know that it is love. Um, love for myself and also love for everybody else. My um, slogan for my business, Face of Hope and Beauty, is choosing to love, choosing to live, and choosing to thrive. But it's love first because I cannot love others if I don't love myself. So, um it is an honor to be here again. <laughs> I am, um, I don't take this for granted. I don't take any moments like this for granted because this is an opportunity, but also um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful and I'm so thankful for you. I love you. You have been a, gosh, such an inspiration to my life. You have helped me to elevate. You have Help me to heal in so many ways. So thank you for your love and your light um, and giving hope to so many people, Melinda. Oh, thank you, babe. Thank you. Uh, okay, so start with my story. <laughs> <laughs> my story starts about, oh, you know, I'm going to take it a little bit different this time. I, um, I normally start my story from when my business started, but I'm going to start a little bit when I, um, when I was a child, um, I was verbally abused by my stepmom and physically abused by my stepmom. Mm. She would beat me. She would um, yell at me. It was a lot of abuse from her. And then that went on. Then the sexual abuse happened from a family friend, um, one of my dad's family, one of my dad's friends. So I endured physical abuse, sexual abuse, and um, verbally abused. But it started there and it went on where I kid you not, everywhere I went, somebody was trying to either physically or myth or verbally or sexually abuse me. Every single where I went from the time I would say I was three um, all the way up to the age of 14. So that kind of trauma and impact on me as a child and teen was detrimental, right? I um I suffered, I hated my life. I felt like I was damaged goods. I felt like I didn't matter. Um, I, I lived with a bunch of guilt and shame, a bunch of, um, it wasn't more so like why me God, but more of um, why did I have to, why did this keep happening, right? Um, I am on a podcast, love. <laughs> Some of my family members don't know. I thought I'd tell everybody, but it's okay. It's me. Okay. And there is no cupcakes. You got to close the door. No more interrupting. I'm going to lock that door in a minute. <laughs> oh, the back to my story, I lived with a bunch of hurt and pain for years. And don't get me wrong, I... um. My mom during the time was an alcoholic and, and on drugs. And so I got put into the system under DCFS. And that's how I ended up living with my dad with the abusive stepmother. Mm. Um, but then my dad was sick. And so he had me go live with his daughter in Springfield, Illinois. And the same thing, you know, being verbally and physically abused now by my sister and then being sexually abused by my sister's um, girlfriend friend. So, and he also molested me and raped me. So um, that was from the age of six, seven, um, between six and seven to when I was 12. 
Mm-hmm. So then when my dad passed away when I was 12, I moved back here and I um told, you know, I told someone, I told my sister um that lived out this way in um Robbins, Illinois. I told her what was going on. We have different dads. My mom has three kids. I am um my dad's only child with my mother and my dad. Um so my sister told everybody what was going on somehow in the midst of that her grandmother, which is I call her my grandmother, she has been my um I guess savior in a sense, like she rescued me out of that bad situation and brought me, you know, here and gave me a home. Hmm. She got DCFS involved and I that's how I ended up getting back here because you would not know me. I would still be in Springfield, Illinois. <laughs> true. They literally not come and basically kidnapped me. I was on my way to school and they picked me up and brought me here. Wow. Oh my gosh. Um, she brought me to church. She introduced me to God and um, why well, should I say that? I, I I always had a connection with God when I was little, but she helped me to build my faith. And um, through building my faith, it's one of the tools that helped me on my journey of self-love is my connection to God. I always recommend people like God is real and just making sure that you just reach out not with attachment of what other people connection to God was or the judgment from church or any of that, just purely just praying to God, just as you are um, and giving yourself that connection. So I reached out to God because I needed healing and I was broken. Um, And there was some healing that took place, but there was still deep rooted um, pain and and hatred and rage. Trauma is interesting with, when it comes to killing. It's not a one and done thing, right? Oh, you don't know. <laughs> um, Definitely. And some things I feel like, yes, it's like, yes, I, 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 I heal good, but there's still like a layer that needs to come off for me to move forward in different areas of my life. And so one of the things about me too, with even fate, having all that trauma, I wanted to get married early. I wanted a family of my own. I wanted to be able to show um, my husband and children love and just, because I didn't have that. I didn't have a mother, right? Right. Um, And so I got married at 18, very young, very, um, very excited, very to love, you know, love my family. And then shortly after that, um, face some marital problems and, that were very heavy on my heart and was trying to still be a perfect wife and a perfect mother um, to my family and my kids, because that's what I thought, right? I I endured all this hardship in the past and now it's like, it has to be perfect. And that is a setup. That is a recipe for disaster. Um, I didn't realize that I had that limiting and negative belief that everything has to be perfect instead of a growth mindset that says, you know what, Charmaine, you don't know how to be a mother. (laughs) You don't know how to be a mother. You don't know how to, first of all, you don't even know how to be a wife. You've never been a wife. You've never been a mother. Um, And guess what? We're going to learn how to do this. You're going to learn and you're going to show yourself grace, right? And forgiveness. But I didn't know any of that. So my mindset of trying to be perfect, um, it led me to being suicidal. Mm. And this is me and my, I want to say, um, my first attempt was at 18. I literally attempted suicide at 18. And um, I was in a hospital for a couple of days. And in the midst of being in that hospital, I knew there has to be another way, right? Um, right. I've grown a lot from the pain, but I, it was more, I truly believe there was more to my life. So I got out the hospital. That was 18. I want to say um, maybe a decade later, I became overwhelmed again with life and trying to be perfect. And I attempted again. Nobody knew about that time. I, um, I lived, I took something and I didn't die. I'll put it that way. Um, and then I want to say, what was the time frame? I am so, I'm getting better with time frames, but the year was 2014. And I um, was also feeling overwhelmed again and 
feeling like I had to be um, perfect again, being this perfect wife and perfect mother. And also the, the thing too, I felt like I wasn't doing anything right. I didn't know how to celebrate my wins. I didn't know, again, how to show myself grace. I felt that I have to be perfect because I have this family and this time was different. It wasn't going to be a, you know, I attempt and not, you know, nothing happened. It was going, I had a plan. Mm. In the midst of having this plan, um, and my kids wasn't, by the way, I'm a mother of six. I have five boys and one girl. Yes, six. <laughs> and she looks like she's this little teeny bopper. I, you know. <laughs> That's what and she's a glamma too. Yes, she's a, a glamma. glamma. <laughs> Glamma and I have a granddaughter that's four and I have another granddaughter that's on the way in September. She does not um, look like a glamma. I'm sorry. Like a grandma or a glamma. Yeah. <laughs> um, Go ahead. My kids weren't in the house and I had a plan. And in the midst of me having a plan and thinking about what I was going to do, God placed it on my heart because God is still a part of my life, right? Even in the midst of the darkest moments. You know what? Even in the midst of the darkest moments, God shows up. <laughs> Yes, man. there is no doubt God showed up and some in the midst, somewhere in the, in my mindset where I was going back and forth with God about what I was going to do. God placed it on my heart to call my husband and he, he didn't work too far away, but it was like when I called him, he was like here. Wow. There was no like, have you ever had a moment where it just seemed like time freeze and there's no, yes. there's no moment, there's no like downtime. It's just, it just. It was it was a pivotal moment in my life. And when he came on home, the first thing he said was, you're the face of hope to many. And if you do that, you're going to hurt a lot of people. Oh. And so he said some more things. But all I kept thinking about that, I was the face of hope because I didn't feel that I was nothing. I didn't feel I had no hope to give. I felt like um, I was just this horrible wife, this horrible person, this horrible mother. And so after we were done talking, I went in our bathroom mirror right over there because I'm in my bathroom and I spoke out of my mouth that I am the face of hope. And God in my spirit said, you're not just the face of hope. You're the face of hope. And oh, oh, I got goosebumps. And God put the beauty part there is because when you're, for me, when I was feeling um, like I was you know, this horrible person, all this guilt, all this shame on me. You don't feel beautiful. You don't even feel pretty. You feel dirty. And then the dirtiness from the sexual abuse and the trauma, I mean, the um, physical abuse, all of it. So to speak that I am the face of hope and beauty gave me hope. And I truly believe words are powerful. I've heard the yeah. term that, you know, if words are, um, and the, actually, the Bible talks about that. There's life and death in the power of our tongue, right? So if we're speaking yes. life, it's going to what? Open it up to have life. And 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 um, I always say whatever you speak, it will grow. So that's in the positive or in the negative. <laughs> and so, but for me, it, I wasn't, it wasn't that I wasn't known to speaking life, but I truly believe it's the right words to speak over yourself. And it was like when I spoke those words, all the negative things that I had said about myself in the past all came crashing down. And I had this, what do you call it? Um, this foundation now to build upon. But I had to choose to build. It wasn't going to happen if I didn't choose. And that's another thing, too. We think that for me, I thought that because of my past trauma and my upbringing, you know, I that was that was choosing for me. Right. And I had to whatever adapt to whatever lifestyle that my trauma set for set out for me. And, you know, I had to, you know, stay in feeling like damaged goods or feeling like I wasn't enough or feeling like um, that I didn't, I didn't mean anything, you know, I, I didn't matter. Um, but that's not the case. We get to choose. And that was the thing for me in learning that I have a choice. A lot of times we think, when, and again, I say we in general, for, for when you're dealing with trauma, um, we think that we have to stay in it and feel that way. And that we have to, for me, I thought that I couldn't heal. I thought that I um, had, again, had to be perfect. But when I made a choice that 
I'm going to love me. You see my shirt says self love. <laughs> <laughs> I am a self love coach. You know, um, I'm going to love me. That's when everything changed, and everything starts with self love. If you don't love you, how are you going to display love to anyone else? I always say mirror yeah. what you want. If my mirror, if I'm mirroring to myself that I'm a disappointment or I'm not enough, that's going to be mirrored back to me from other people. But if I mirror to myself, you are amazing, girl. You are doing great things. You are lovable. I am going to attract that, but also I'm going to also show that to others. Yes. So I'm going to give that. So that's why I said I, I, I love me and I love others so much because of the love that I built within myself. But that's where it starts. Okay. It starts with you. And I always say self, self-acceptance is where your true self-love journey begins. If I don't accept me, how can I love me? Yes, ma'am. So I have learned to love me and it has been a journey. Um, but self-love is not just a one and done thing too. Just like I said with healing from trauma is is picking up the tools and using them daily. Um, just like if you were to go in the bathroom and you would brush your teeth and wash your hair, you know, or wash your face. Um these tools of self-love, you do it so that you continue to show up for you, right? Because if I right. don't use these tools, I'm not showing up for me. So one of, you know, people ask me, how, how do you love yourself? Well, show up. Well, what do you do after you show up? Well, what do you need? What do you want? You know, um, in, this, in this journey of self-love, you know, didn't happen overnight. The story I was telling you was 2014, May of 20, literally May 2014, right before Mother's Day. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought it was interesting that it was right before Mother's Day, but that's because I felt like a horrible mother, right? Yeah. I felt like I wasn't doing enough. I, I, I was missing it. But remember, like I told you, I didn't know how to be a mother. I had right. to teach myself how to be a mother. And even watching other mothers and learning from other mothers and even thinking about like, well, what? What do I want my motherhood to look like? You know, and Ooh, oh, that's good. Giving that to myself, um, allowing myself to, you know, meditate on what that looks like. And I would sit, I was like, oh, I want to be the mom, you know, where, you know, I just embrace the kids and I kiss them and they love me <laughs> and I love them. And, you know, they're excited to see me. And then I mirrored it and I received that from my children. But before it wasn't like that because my mirror was, I'm not doing enough. I'm not enough, you know? And I, I was already doing more than enough. God yeah. chose me on purpose to be those kids' mom. So I'm enough. You're enough. So I um, went on to build um, my business and start to two years later after that. So my business started in 2016. But for two years, I went heavy and I'm still heavy into building me up and self-love. Um, but I took a lot of self-help classes and um, read a lot of books. Actually, no, not a lot. One particular support agreement. <laughs> oh, I should say I intertwine different books. But um, that book changed my life. That book is one of my favorite books. Besides my own book, I am writing my book. <laughs> but um I learn, and it's still learning to love me. Hello. Is he yeah. in oh, yeah. Harry's in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's getting that's coffee. Why, that's why oh, I'm in what? my bedroom, because I know you've seen a bunch of people. Yeah, I'm in the kitchen. A bunch of people walking around. <laughs> oh, oh, so I know everyone's going to ask, okay, so what was the name of the book? My book? Oh, wait, what book? No, the book that inspired you. Oh, The Four Agreements. Well, I know Before. that, but in case anybody else. Oh, I didn't say the name. Oh, my no. God. Yeah, I said the book. The Four Agreements. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. So, yeah. Well, how this... did you, how did you, what tools, in case somebody's out here watching or listening right now, I mean, you mentioned tools several times. So, oh, tools, listening tools, but... to podcasts. Um, okay. I'm big about building yourself up, right? So, mm -hmm. what you hear is feeding you. So listening to very um, empowering podcasts, which you have one. <laughs> you know what I mean? But listening um, 
playing music that edifies my spirit. Music is, oh my gosh, that's a whole nother thing. Um, oh, that is. Yes. <laughs> All my workshops, I have music because music is healing. Music is a is vibrational, right? It it lifts us up. It if you're in a bad mood, turn on your favorite songs. I guarantee you're gonna feel better. Um, playing music that is just healing for my spirit. I also I'm big about journaling, and so um, one of the tools I'll do if I am needing to release, say that I'm having. A, and by the way, I do. I have, dealt with and I didn't mention depression and anxiety. Um, so if I'm dealing with any kind of anxiety, I will literally, this is my little, I have a pen, but I would take for a bigger piece of paper than this because I need a bigger <laughs> piece of paper, but I will literally write out everything that's in my mind. If I'm worried about, you know, the cars acting up, kids need school stuff, clothes, whatever, get it out. You have to get it out. So getting the anxiety out you know, off of me. And then I would take another sheet of paper and I would write out what I want, what I want, what I want. Oh, cars fixed. Kids has have clothes. They have school supplies, um, whatever the need is. Right. Even right. if the need was, I need a break. Ooh, I'm, I'm going somewhere, you know, just. <laughs> I love that idea. I love the write it out tool and I've used it every single time just to help me um, get the anxiety out, get it off of me. Um, and then it helps me to manifest, right? To right. pray, to speak what I want. Because the thing about life too, life is always happening. Things are always, you know, there's always problems, situations, problems to solve, you know, things to conquer. That's life. And the thing right. I learned about life is that we don't have to be afraid to do life. We can do life well, but the only way to do life well, if we use the tools, <laughs> you know, um, and know that we have the power to do it. There's times too, where I, um, and I didn't mention yet, but I also deal with PMDD. PMDD is a, and I, <laughs> I got to figure out how to say this correctly, but it's a pre it's I don't know how do you say it. It's not pre mister just order, I'm going to say it wrong, so I'm not going to say it, but <laughs> basically like, you know what PMS is, um, PMDD is basically where right before my cycle, my serotonin levels will drop um, two weeks or a week before my cycle, which can make me very um, depressed, have high anxiety. And so if I am having those symptoms, I, there's tools also, I already have tools in place, right? For self-love, you know, like I said, um, journaling and different things, but I have to make sure, especially around that time that I am not overwhelming myself with the tools, but picking one or two or three tools just to help me. So my ones I use a lot is, it could be just speaking affirmations, a, a couple of them, and just showing myself grace. And my biggest one is celebrating my wins. So if I did one or two things that day, those are a win. And I'm like, yes, girl, you did it. You showed <laughs> up. It is phenomenal what you're doing, you know, opposed to what well, you only did one or two things. Mm. And seeing that, you know, a lot of times we look at our enough, like we, if we didn't do 10 things that I meant that we didn't do enough, but we don't understand we have different energy right? Dinner, different um, levels of our energy each day. So if my energy is only at 50% and I did two things, I did a hundred percent. That's right. Um, And I had to learn to just lean into showing myself grace with that because the type of person I am, I know that I can, um, when I am high energy, girl, I can do 20 <laughs> plus <laughs> That That's still me, right? But then the days when it's only one or two things, that's still me. So part of self-love too is loving all parts of you when you're on and when you feel like you can't be on. I'm just as lovable. But at times I know in the even recently, I um I can find myself where I will feel like I'm not lovable because I I'm like, you know, the thought will say, Well, you're being lazy. I am not being lazy. <laughs> I, I am not if if people were to talk about my character. I guarantee they will not say I'm lazy. Oh, no. 
Um, but in my mind, because I'm not doing those 20 things how I would normally do if I'm able to be on, I'm like, well, you're being lazy. And I'm like, I'm not being lazy. My body physically cannot get out of bed this morning. Or if I can get out the bed, it was just me taking the kids to school and then me laying back down and just speaking affirmations over me. And there's sometimes I don't want to speak it. I have my mm. affirmations recorded in my phone where I could just play it. <laughs> or if I don't want to hear my voice <laughs> and play somebody else, you know, or play a podcast or something, anything that's going to ed- elevate and um, edify my spirit. So. Oh, um, and I found it premenstrual dis. I didn't say it. Perfect. That's a word that I can't, that Disorder. I forget to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. I think that's, I might be saying it wrong. I'm going to type it. I think it. you said it right. I said it right. Did I say it right? I think okay, you did. But I see it, it wrong. So that's why I just won't say it. So hold on. Let me get rid of this one. And by the way, this one right here, this is where you can find Charmaine. And I did put it in the comments. It did post there. I'm going to just take this moment to, t- sorry, monster hands. You're going to you see that monster hands. Hopefully. Um, okay. Now I got to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm typing if I'm typing it right. And sorry, I have also bifocals. So you're going to see up my nose just a little bit. Oh my God. <laughs> People be crazy telling you on the internet when you have more nose hairs or whatever. Hey, I could see. I don't see anything. Well, thank you. <laughs> but people, you know, they are very critiquing. critiquing. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. All right. You know what? Let me put on. But there. even with that, right? Even with that, um, and I just heard I went to a mental health um wellness retreat, and I just heard you know, and I think we've talked about that too, where things we face is based off from trauma, right? Right. So these disorders or, you know, anxiety or depression or um, it's it's from past trauma. So even this, right? Right. Um, I did find out this too a couple of years ago that I was dealing with that. And the way I found out with the PMDD was by tracking my emotions. And I wasn't tracking it to find this. I just noticed that certain times of the month, I just, I felt like my body was hijacked. I felt like I could not be me. Um, Felt like I was going crazy. (laughs) You know, I was like, what is wrong with me? Why can't I, you know, why do I feel like this? And I knew, um, I knew it it wasn't even like something where I can, that I was going through like a depression or oppression. It was just, I noticed it each month, a certain time. And then I remember talking to my OB about it and that's how it came out. And they were like, oh, well, you have this and this wow. is what's going on. Um, they do have medication for it for me. I'm not, I have just been using my tools. I am not against medication. If I need it, I'm going to do it. But I am aware that I noticed I would have the most sy- symptoms if I'm not eating, if I'm eating a lot of a highly fat diet. Right. So greasy foods, fried foods, lots of sweets, especially sweets that are not gluten free because I don't supposed to eat gluten. Um, those type of foods will really affect me, my mood um, around that time um, of my cycle. So I really have to watch that. Which but is crazy all, because around that time of the month, we're you, all craving right. those but you can, I, can st- I still give myself sweets, but I am um, I'm doing a gluten free sweets. And I am eating more fruit. So fruit is so good. It is <laughs> you know, eating more fruit and putting the tahim on it, and, you know, so just doing it in a different way. And the thing about self-love is that when you start showing yourself self-love, you become what? In tune with yourself. So you learn what is working and what is not working. And uh, one of the tools I didn't yet mention was meditation. So sitting in stillness. Sitting in stillness helps you to learn you. And I don't mean, I'm not the one that I just sitting, right? Not moving. Sitting in stillness is for me where I am. I like to do guided meditation. So um, part of me as a self-love coach, I offer guided meditations. And I sit and I speak affirmations or mantras to help me center myself. And as I center myself, once I get centered and I, you know, I'm not, thinking about, oh, you should have did that last week or you could do that. 
I am now sitting where I'm like in a space of gratitude and I am welcoming um, love and abundance into my life and my world. And as I'm doing that, I, I, um, I learn things about me. I learn things that I, I want. I learn things that I don't want to, you know, um, that are no longer serving me and I need to let go. And so, and this is not something that I do for hours. It, I, literally this morning, I, I sat in my stillness, laying in my bed and just, I started with just speaking, um, my body is refreshed, renewed and regenerated. And I just kept speaking that. And that's one of, that's a part of a phrase that I would say during my, the guided meditation that I created. But um, I went from there to, I am so grateful. I am so grateful for my life. And I want to paint a picture for you. I'm doing this now, but in the past, when I would lay in that bed, I, I wouldn't do that. I would be, I would feel defeated and I would feel like I couldn't get up. But now I am what? Choosing, choosing. Self-love is a choice. Mm -hmm. You get to choose you every day. So self-love is, like I said, not a one and done. It's me waking up every day and say, hey, I choose you. I choose you today. And then tomorrow comes. I choose you again. Really? Yeah, I choose you. <laughs> and, and, but then also choosing different versions of you because you're not the woman you were 10 years ago. You're not even oh, the woman no. you were yesterday, right. right? But I still choose me. And sometimes when I choose me, again, back to being self-aware, I'm like, man, you're really different. <laughs> um, but I still choose you. And I'm grateful. I'm not divided with myself. When we don't choose ourselves, and we don't show ourselves love, we feel divided because everything around us is trying to tell us who we should be. But when you are self-secure and you know yourself, you're not divided. You're not wondering, um, you're not looking outward for approval and acceptance because you accept you. You have given yourself the ultimate, I'm saying right, ultimate <laughs> acceptance, you know, and approval. And that's what matters. Um, and one thing I say about a pro, if you need a little, not even an extra, this is the top. Um, God gave you life. Mm. You know what I mean? Life is your approval stamp. You have life. You're breathing. You're, you're alive. You're approved. You don't need to look. And that was another thing, too, I noticed with my trauma was that I used to look for outside approval mm -hmm. and acceptance. Because it's like, hey, accept me. me. Yes, me. I matter. You know, but no, I accept me. And if somebody else accept me, hey, great. But I accept me. I love me. You know, and if they want to come into my world, hey, let's do it. <laughs> but I'm not seeking that. You know, it was a lot of seeking that. And that's what that was a part. Even me um, becoming suicidal was that I was trying to be everything to everybody and not mm -hmm. your name. That's where the dividing comes from. Mm -hmm. Trying to be everything to everybody, but then you have nothing to give to you. Right. So that's why I said it starts with you and then outward. It never starts backwards. When we do that backwards, even I've heard the term, even from my um my grandmother, right? My grandmother passed away um years ago, but she came from a background where they they of course there's nothing wrong with sacrificing. I'm not against sacrifice, but when she was sacrificing, she gave gave of herself, right? Mm -hmm. to everybody, but she didn't give nothing to her. You know, that's, I'm, I'm against that. That's wrong. That's backwards. But she was taught that from her mother and her mm. mother was taught that from my great, great grandmother, you know, right. where we do it backwards. No, self-love is you loving you, you building up in you. And the thing too, I learned about when we sit in stillness and build ourselves up, we bloom, we bloom, we grow. Um, but a lot of times we think like, okay, we're growing because we're doing all this. No, you grow as you sit with you. You Ooh. bloom as you sit with you. A lot of times I noticed in the past too, I used to be afraid to sit with me because my thoughts were so, that was me, you know, traumatic and, and, and traumatized, you know, and um, I was, I was very abusive to myself during those moments of, of quiet, you know? So that's why I start speaking to affirmation. So I'm like, well, I'm going to do this. I, I mean, I knew how to hate me, right? I knew how to hate Charmaine. So let's try this self-love thing. 
let's give it a try, you know? And so speaking to affirmations helped me, even if I didn't feel like I loved me, I would go in the mirror and I was like, I love you. And I might not feel anything. Actually, you know, I would cry every time I would say it, mm. I would cry. Um, or if I would say, God loves you, I would cry because um, I felt like I wasn't doing enough for God. Mm. But I am, I am more than enough. I am doing enough. You are doing enough. And so now when I go in the mirror and say, you're loved, you're lovable, I love you. It's this big smile that comes on my face. Um, it's not this me trying to, you know what I mean, right. love me. But that's the thing, it's taking steps. So I don't want people to think like, hey, you say it and it's like, you love you. No, this, <laughs> this is years of work. Um, journaling, I journal all the time in my journals, different things about myself. I love you. You're amazing. You're doing great things. Um, you're enough. I'm enough. Excuse me. I gotta say it in first person. I'm enough. But doing that constantly, um, daily, consistently is what helps you to continue on your self-love journey and here keyword journey it is a journey like i said self-love is not a one and done people think well i did some affirmations this week and the next week you know well what did you do the other days do something and i'm not telling you that you have to do 10 things pick a thing you know my thing some days i just celebrate my wins girl you made that bad yes and, and a lot of times we think wins have to be this grand thing. No, you made the bed. You took a shower, girl. Yes, I took a shower. I'm clean. You know, <laughs> celebrate everything you do is a win. Everything I do is a win. Yes. So celebrating your wins um, and then using the tools, like I said, speaking affirmations. I'm big about it. And I'm not big about like speaking. Sometimes people are like, I want to speak these hundred affirmations. <laughs> I'm not saying not to do that at times, but for me, it's getting three or five really good ones that like, mm -hmm. when you speak it, you like feel it. It's like, yes. I'll, you, I'll, I'll speak mine right now that are new that I just added. And I rotate them. I used to rotate them quarterly. So every three months I would switch out my five. Um, but now I just let it come to me. So like the ones that I got now is I am complete. I am lovable. I have never said I'm lovable. I was like, where is, am I never said that? I know. Really? I would always, yes, I would always speak you're loved or I am loved, but I would never spoke I am lovable. And wow. then I start saying that one, and that one's like, that one's different. Than just saying too. It is. It's different than saying I'm love. Saying I'm lovable is like I can see like myself surrounded, people just kissing me and just like, you're yeah, lovable. you're just so lovable. I just love you, you know. Um, yeah, especially coming from a background with childhood abuse, sexual abuse, and so on, when you feel that shame and so on, and you feel like no one's going to love me unless I'm this, or no, I'm just no one's going to love me. But saying that I am lovable, I that's love free, that that's so much power. See, if that. you feel it, right? It is the right. point to feel it. And so I've been speaking that one. And then um, this one I've been saying for a while, but I brought it back is I am received with love and grace. Um, during, I told you during the time of PMDD, I'll have high anxiety. And right. one of the things will happen is I'll start to feel like I'm not received with love and grace, or like I didn't do something right or say something. And I'll just, I am received with love and grace. I don't care if they don't like me. I am received <laughs> with love and grace. And then you put that, I am lovable. Yes. You know, with it, but I am received with love and grace. I am received with love and grace. You good? Somebody said something. <laughs> oh, I'm just checking. Make sure <laughs> my phone went dark. So I had to check. <laughs> no, we're good. You're getting some hearts there. Aww. And some thumbs up. I know I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question for you. Okay, so yeah. we talked about meditation. Now, when you are meditating, especially if you haven't done it before, maybe you someone's tried it and it's just like, mm, I don't know, sitting in stillness. Nah. For me, it's the chatter monkey. I had this little monkey and I'm thinking to myself, I've got dishes to do. I've got this to do. I shouldn't be doing this right I now. Love, I love your question. So sitting in stillness. So let me let me clarify meditation. Meditation is a state of mind. So I've done meditate. I've meditate when I do the dishes, girl, because I don't want to do the dishes. <laughs> I meditate on the treadmill. So there's times, yes, where you sit and you're being completely still. Like I said, I'm laying in the bed. Um, but meditation is a state of mind. So meditation is a space where you're centering yourself in peace and love and in joy. So 
If I am meditating, doing the dishes, I am thinking about how grateful I am. Mm. I'm thinking about I am surrounded by love. That's meditating. I am thinking about how everything is working out for me. But like I said, to get yourself, you said the chatter monkey, to get to shut up those thoughts. I will literally play music before I start or I will um, speak affirmations. And then I will get quiet. So again, it's a state of mind. <laughs> um, getting quiet means <laughs> getting quiet um, and just now speaking it in, inward, right? Right. So now I'm what I was speaking verbally. Now I'm just speaking inward and saying it. I am loved. I am lovable. Everything is working out for me as I'm washing these dishes. Oh, I have a new dishwasher. <laughs> Whatever you know, things that I want to receive. Okay. So, but I start with music. Um, if I'm not, if I don't do the affirmations, the um, a guided meditation affirmation before, I'll just play music. Music will guide you into that med- that space, right? Right. Um, and I love songs that are affirmational. There's a self love song. I think it's called Self Love. It's by Zen Z E N. Yes. Self love. Yes. Yes. Her whole song is an affirmation. So. You're, it, it brings you to a space of, you know, centering yourself. Like I said, meditation is a state of mind. Um, people think that, oh, I have to meditate. I have to be still. No, stillness is still you centering yourself. Now, there's times, yes, you sit still and you journal. Um, you set that space. But there's times where you, you you know, you might need that. Why are you doing the dishes? Why you? I love meditating while I'm driving a car. Me I'm too. still focused on the road, but yet, you know, I'm speaking or I'm playing something that's getting me to center myself in peace, in love and enjoy. And it creates a space for me to what? Be open to receive. Right. So exactly. it takes a wave of thinking that, well, if I'm not still, I'm not meditating. You, we could meditate on the wrong thing without being still, you know, because it's a state of mind. So if, if I'm meditating on all my problems and things are not working out for me, I am feeding that and that's going to grow. I told you, whatever you feed is going to grow. So if I don't want more problems and, um, you know, situations to come, I'm going to feed what I want to grow. So if there's a problem, I'm speaking that it's solved. I'm speaking that I am fully supported on my life's journey. But the thing is, I love saying, I always say do check-ins. So a lot of times we don't know where we're at up here, right? right. So I say do a check-in in the morning. I did a check-in, I was laying in a bed, which my check-in was what? I was in a space of gratitude. So I know I'm good here, but say in the afternoon, there comes some anxiety. Take another moment where you sit with yourself and you sit um, and you say, you write down your thoughts. What thoughts are coming up? Oh, you don't feel enough. Well, where did that come from? The thing yeah. about doing a check-in is that you can feel like crap all day, but there's thoughts in your head going around saying you're not enough. You didn't do enough or um, something's not going to work out. And you don't even know, but it's taking energy away from you and it's, and, and it's not helping you to grow what you want to grow in your life. You're feeding the negative instead of feeding the positive. So sitting with yourself, and I say do three check-ins a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. Um, And the evening when it's a nice one before bedtime, because you're about to go to bed. You want to go to bed thinking about your problems. You want to go to bed thinking about, um, you know, feeling like you're not enough. You want to go to bed like, yes, today was amazing. Tomorrow is, you know, you're going to wake up and it's going to be great. Everything is worked out for me. And even if I don't know or understand how it's going to happen, I know that everything is always working out for me. So just putting yourself in that space. And I have, you know, like I said, a lot of us have these smartphones. Um, I have three check-ins. I have one in the morning one in the afternoon and one in the evening alerts. But once you get those alerts, um, you know, do it. And I know See, for a while I've, I've, huh? I love that. I used to do that. And I still do with the gratitude alarm mm-hmm. where I have these check-ins throughout the day, just to remind myself. And it brings me back to focus and center. Right, it's centers you. So it's very similar to that. Yes. So I love that. Though. Well, now I have yeah. a new alarm dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I changed mine. Cause I have a, how could I say that? I'm not rebellious, but 
Um, <laughs> I have this thing where, and that's why I love, I'm a coach. So part of me being a coach is that I am a um, group coach. So every time I have an event or some kind of group coaching, it's different women. Sometimes it's similar, but it could be the same event, but it's so different every time because there's different women. But I found that I have to switch things up a lot. Otherwise, I'll get bored. So even if it might be saying check in, I have to change the words. I'm like, one day it was gratitude. Um, a couple, I think a year later, I changed it to self love check in. Then I changed it to it's something else now. Because <laughs> I'll ignore it. <laughs> I'm like, what is my check in called now? Where is it? Oh, so I have different ones each each morning. So my morning one is stretching and meditation, which I did. I didn't stretch this morning, but I meditated. My afternoon one. It's my afternoon, not one o'clock. Oh, gratitude minutes. And then my one in the evening is self-love and gratitude minutes. Oh. So I, like I just realized it. it used to be all the same names, but I've been changing them just so that. I and like I think that. part of changing them too, um, and this is the thing I would encourage everybody to do, you set an intention of what you want to receive. So if I know, hey, Charmaine, you meet not with you at this time for this intention to sh for, you know, to speak out what you're grateful or you set an intention to show yourself some love and a stretch or move your body. Um, that's my appointment, right? With me. Because I, what did I say? The biggest thing for self-love is showing up for you because we show up for everybody else. <laughs> right. So right. showing up for you. And I always say, if you have time to scroll, you have time to give yourself a little self-love, even if it's five minutes, something. Like you right, said, you but are it's that consistently exactly. building that up. Um, right. And I always tell people, don't. <laughs> I am the simplest coach. Do not put yourself in a box. Again, I told you, I, and I'm not rebellious, but I am like, I cannot put myself in a box because I will like rebel again. <laughs> Like I, I, I'm grateful for that consistency, right? And I have to switch the words up because I know me. Um, but don't think that hey, you have to do this every morning. Switch it up for you. If you're like me and you have to switch things up because you get bored easily, do it. Um, it could be you know you journaling one morning, the next morning you're speaking affirmations, and then you're you know doing journaling in the evening. Just doing something the point is to do something to show yourself love um if even if it's you going for a walk you working out the point is to show up for you so exactly exactly and it doesn't have to be big and grandiose no like it's said, baby and i always say walk. baby steps do yes. baby steps don't i got to this i didn't get to this place by overwhelming myself and to be honest um years ago because I, I knew about speaking affirmations but i was the one that was trying to speak these hundred affirmations right and it was a disservice to me because it it was it wasn't hitting where it needs to hit it was just like slapping a band-aid on it. It, it it's um and i wasn't connecting with it whatever you do make sure you're connecting with it because you're building yourself up so being intentional about your self-love and your self-care and what you're speaking over you but just baby steps i just little here a little there and then you look up and you're like man okay i've grown it doesn't have to be difficult you know a lot of times we overthink it and it becomes difficult i had someone um i had a meditation last week and one of the things i say um at the beginning i say breathe in through your nose and blow it out through your mouth well this particular lady um she thought that she had to continue to do that during the meditation and she kept thinking about it, but it was stealing from her from being in peace because she was like, all I could think about was I had to breathe. And I was like, no, <laughs> just breathe. I said, no. So my point is just breathe. Don't overthink it. Let me tell you a secret. You are powerful and everything you need is within you. So when you are sitting with you and you're asking yourself what you need, just give it to yourself. I love it when I sit and I was like, what do you need? And I'll sit and then I'll write, oh, you need a hug today. All right, let's let's give yourself a hug. Let's get yourself a hug. Um, don't Did you get one the other day, by the way? I, I got a special hug from my husband. <laughs> <laughs> A little, 
a little bit, um, not a little bit, a very intimate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, going back to your events, you did mention your group gatherings. Let's talk about that. So where do you have gatherings at? In um, Northwest Indiana, I host a lot um, for Munster Park District. Dyer um, Park District, as well as St. John and Salt Cave and St. John, as well as I host my own. I'm looking to have a self-love event this year. Um, it's a self-love, body positivity kind of event. So yeah, I've been wanting to do one for a while. And I'm going to have some the lady that um, I'm taking her belly, belly dance lessons from. I'm going to have her do belly dance. Awesome. So I've been wanting, wanting to do that for a while. But then also I... Um, host events in Illinois as well. So I have speaking at local schools, um, as well as public libraries, my different workshops. And I, and I love what I do. I, it's my purpose. I, I, I love helping people to understand what self-love is and to protect their peace and energy and go through life, just doing life well. We don't have to complicate it, right? It doesn't right. have to be complicated. And then helping them to know that they have a choice. They have a choice. They get to choose themselves, but they get to heal. Um, part of my healing journey is that I've healed a lot and I'm still healing, but it's a journey. And um, I don't, I don't have to complicate my healing, you know, I, I get to just allow myself. And that's the thing to be open, um, be open to receive part of my growth and healing is that I learned to be open and open doesn't mean that you're skeptical. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with that, but being, giving yourself and speaking out, I'm open to receive, I'm open to grow. I'm open to heal. I, um, there was some healing that needed to take in place in me this year and, and I've been healing, but at one point I was like, okay, I'm done crying. I'm good. <laughs> you know, and it doesn't mean I'm not healing if I'm crying all the time, but it was just like, you know, I'm healed and I, and I, and I, I'm open to my healing. I'm open to growing. Um, and then also letting go of the past part of me, the biggest part for me in self-love too, is learning that. I can let go of the past. But then when I let go of the past, it's not like, oh, the past. It's like, I I love my past version self. She did the absolute best that she could. Right? That is so good. Yes. With the tools she had. Right. I didn't have these tools that I have now. Why would I judge myself for not having these tools? You should have had that, you know, right. 20 years ago. No. And you didn't know. You didn't know. I didn't know. You know. I didn't know. Yeah. And I'm grateful for the tools I had then because it's all built. Everything is connected. I would not be the person I am today had not I had the tools I had then. It's all connected. Yes, ma'am. And it's all me. So. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you, gorgeous, for all of this wisdom. Really and truly, thank you so much. And for sharing those little tidbits of your story. I, I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that. And if anybody would like to connect with Charmaine, her link is down there in the comments, yes, but also Instagram. it's scrolling Instagram. You can find her there. I'll have yes. a podcast. And if, you, if you're not on Instagram, my website is faceofhopeandbeauty.com. Oh, that. Yes. Let me put that up here right now. I know so I forgot face. something. Yeah, because a lot of I've learned that, that people are half people on social media, half people are not. So my website is faceofhopeandbeauty.com. And I have lots of tools on there. My blog is on there. Um, okay, let me do that. Let's get rid of this baby. Okay. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Let me put that in the comments too. So sorry, Monster Fingers again. Here we go. You are fine. I can't even see him with the little block from the, from the website. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> He's like blocking it so. <laughs> There we go. I'm adding that to the comments down here and I'll put it in the podcast notes as well. Now I also, trying of, like trying to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> a pose. He's cute. And also you hit another key topic with this one let's see that one i got oh there it goes for anybody that is considering 
uh, maybe on living themselves, we have yeah. 988 that you can dial for suicide prevention and also awareness. And wow. I see a therapist too that helps with that. Oh, um, thank you for mentioning again, that. I don't. Um, There's such I, a stigma with seeing a counselor or a therapist. On right. And, I, and that's how it was in the beginning before I seen it. I was like, you know, almost afraid in a sense, but Mm. again, I'm going to do what's best for me and, and give myself what I need. And I need it to talk to a therapist. And I've been seeing my therapist right. for over, I'm going to say five years now, but be even before her, I was seeing a different therapist. And um, I'm big about just giving yourself what you need. And you know, um, therapy is amazing. I love my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> um, just having someone, you know, you can share and and help you, but then also friends, you know, I'm a part of my journey with tools is having friends, friends, real friends, friends who love you and accept you that are not trying to put you in a box or make you be somebody who you're not. I, um, I have three very close friends. Melinda is one of my besties, um, you know, and, but out of the three, like, those are the ones that I can completely be open and share my heart without feeling judged. Um, but then also they're going to be very real with me, you know, and um, help me in any way they can. But I, I needed that. But how did I receive that? It was one of the things I spoke and Melinda and I, we've talked about that, how we we wanted certain connections and friendships, but we we spoke it, we prayed for it and manifest what we need. So I don't want you to think that, you know, sometimes we think, well, that's just for them. That happened for them. No, it can happen for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you speaking out and knowing that you deserve love. You deserve connection. You deserve everything your heart's desire and you can have it. So I had to learn it for myself and, um, and also stop tolerating the negative. I had some people in my life who I call friends and they just, they weren't friends. They wanted me to be somebody who I wasn't. They didn't accept me. They kept trying to change me. I'm like, no, let me be. Let me be me. <laughs> you know, and then the friends that you get that lets you be you, you, you bloom more, you flourish more because you're not being restricted from being you. Exactly. So, again, anything that's not serving you, let it go. You can let it go and be open to welcome the new. Oh, that was beautiful. And we'll have to do this again, but I will do it again on Saturday when we have our yeah. winning retreat, Letting Go. Yes, Ms. Charmaine will be there. The That's perfect, Susan, I just said, let it go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's gonna be an amazing, phenomenal event. It so if will. you have not registered yet, please you do. No time. Oh, I didn't put it, I'll have to put it in the comments. Yes. Please, yes, yeah, put the yeah. link there because they, they need now. to register. Yeah. I say I'm going to do that and then I won't do that. There we go. It is going to be amazing. Yes. So much healing, so much fun. Melinda yes. just brings fun. Oh. <laughs> you, well, you do like play and healing and oh my gosh. I am looking for, I, I'm a part because I'm speaking, but I'm looking forward to going. <laughs> I told her, I'm like, I am so excited to go. It's going to be so good. Uh, it will. It will. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And every year it's different. I've just been learning new things every year about um, different things to do. This year, a big thing for me was to get out of my comfort zone and ask for donations, sponsors. And Miss Charmaine has been amazing with her help and reach out as well. Yeah, so it's been a lot easier since I've been doing that, a lot less stress. It's been uh, very welcoming from the community, and I'm just really excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. But on that, we have to go. Yay. Speaking of, I've got swag bags to pick up for the ladies. <laughs> yes. And so I'm going to do that. So we're going to sign on off. Thank you for, so much for watching, for tuning in, listening to the Thank podcast. You. You'll find that later. And again, send Charmaine some love over at her website or on, I'm going to throw that up there again. Nope. Sorry, I'm in the comments. It, it's it's going go. on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> IG and her website. So send her some love there. We'll see you Saturday, ma'am. We're going to sign on off. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Stay safe and God bless.